Thank you all for coming tonight. Good evening. Uh, we're going to talk about what is Web3 and why you should care. As the summary, Web3 is rebuilding the internet. And why you should care is because I don't think we want to grow old and have our kids learning new technologies and we're, where we feel old, like our dads or parents trying to create accounts and forgetting our passwords. That's the way I think about it. If we don't learn about it now, we're quickly going to feel that way because I'm already starting to feel this way when you venture into the space. Uh, it's a deep rabbit hole. And for many of you who have ventured into Web3, you probably are familiar with this rabbit hole. Once you go in, you really can't go out, back out of it. And so proceed with caution because it's a whole new space. And there are millions and millions of developers and the smartest people that I know that are working in the space. So it's actually worth paying attention to. And probably the one main reason why you should care is that I believe Web3 will help leapfrog emerging markets uh, to go past developed markets. But before digging in, let's quickly introduce ourselves. Ahmed al Wasimi, and I've been down this rabbit hole since 2016. I was born in 2020 in Montreal, Canada, and I bought my first Bitcoin and Ethereum in 2016, when my Bitcoin was 17,000, and then uh, everything started crashing, and I started buying more. Uh, and it's all about having skin in the game. You actually need to purchase the stuff to learn and participate. So I've been in it for 2016, been through one cycle of a crash and things picked up again and now things are crashing again. Uh, I'm leading one of the venture studios here in Egypt called Curious Labs, where we are focused on building ventures with a focus on Web3 projects. Um, and that's my colleague Basuni. Thank you, Asini. So my name is Basuni, Ahmed Basuni. And I'm basically now 100% all of my time focused on being a principal at Opener VC, working with early stage startups in the technology field. <clears throat> but what's more interesting than that is in the day in, day out, I've been learning about Web3 as well for the past at least one year and a half. غالبا من ساعة كمان ما شفت وسيمي وابتدينا نشتغل مع بعض هو الراجل كان جاي من كندا شوية عنده حبة experience وجرب من 2016 أنا I started learning واحدة واحدة and then I started getting into that rabbit hole لحد ما دخلت في النفع بقى سبقني بقى خالص وكل شوية موضوع أبي أتفرع مني بس today I think إن شاء الله will be يعني will have كده a chance to kind of share some of the things we've learned uh, alongside our journey, both of us, which has been completely different. Everyone has been taking it من الحتة اللي هو فعلا بيحبها أو الحتة اللي تشدلها. Uh, but that's what I'm doing. I'm a principal at Opener. Um, eight months ago, I was super lucky to be trying the future of work uh, <coughs> through co-founding an NFT project with friends who I've worked with tens of, ten years ago. تمن أشخاص من خمس دول اشتغلنا مع بعض على project and an NFT a Web3 project. So I'm kind of trying to understand more about that space as well من الحتة دي. And I've worked in Karim, I've worked in Busta, so I come from the technology startup side of things. And then last year I moved to the venture capital side uh, of the game. With الوقتي we're digging into Web3. I think it's um, an interesting. Uh, opportunity to be here with everyone. I'm yes. متحمس جدا إن بصراحة في ناس شكلها جاية من حتة مختلفة وجاية علشان تسمع بالذات على Web3. فقبل ما ندخل أكتر يا وسيمي عايز أسأل سؤال. Who's in this rabbit hole دلوقتي؟ يعني مين سمع على موضوع Web3 ده وقرا عنه وتسحل ودخل في حتة كده يعني Who's in that by the show vans? Good. So we have. Okay. آه. فنص الناس اللي هنا اتسحلت في القصة اللي إحنا بنتكلم فيها دي. Very interesting. Very interesting. So we have a lot to go through today. Um, yeah. So we're going to be moving quite fast. We'll take questions towards the end, but we'll try and really speed through this uh, process. And then it might be worth it. We're going events do digging into specific categories and topics that we'll be covering today. But the goal of today is يعني, we want to cover three things. We're going to learn more about what Web3 is and what it entails. And we're going to discuss successful applications in the space. And then finally, learn how we can build in the space and collaborate together because that's the only way we can actually move forward in the space, yeah. So we need more talented people and people who are interested and passionate about Web3 so that we can work together. So what the fuck is Web3? Uh, <laughs> and I, I like to, and I was thinking about many examples because we all need mental models so we can space that. We are rebuilding the internet. The internet was built about 20 years ago, but there's key foundational things we need to change. But a good example I like to use is Monopoly. 
مين لعب مونوبولي هنا قبل كده؟ يعني يو كان اولموست ثينك اوف ويب 3 از ا ا جوينت مونوبولي جيم ويزن اند ذيرز ميني مونوبولي جيمز ويزن ات فكل واحد فينا بيلعب ذيرز ا توكن ذات وي هولد اند ذات ريبريزنتس هو وي ار ذيرز كيرنسي ان ذيس جيم اند وي ونت تو باي ريل استيت اند اسيتس Um, it's almost think of any, the examples that we're going to cover today, we're going to relate it to Monopoly to a certain extent, uh, because this is what Web3 is allowing people to do. It's allowing people to build their own design, their own Monopoly games, and every participant and user or builder that's participating to help this game evolve is partly an owner or an investor in the game, for Bardo wins from, uh, from the network. And what's happening is that we are rebuilding the stock market. Only the only difference now for Web3 is that this stock market is 24/7. It's a lot. It's it's always on, um, and everyone is an owner and an investor in the stock market. So and that's what it is facilitating. If you've played games, you will be one of the early adopters in Web3, and uh, because as the interface, um, it's 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 really fascinating how gamers actually. Uh, know more about the future than uh, what universities taught us. Yeah, all the gamers that are playing today will be able to make money from the games that they play and cash out in Egyptian pounds or US dollars. This is actually happening today, and we're going to go through through some examples. Um, and many say it is the golden age for creators and artists. Um, there are a lot of intermediaries that take a lot of the the, the share from creators and artists. And uh, now with Web3, there's an ability for artists and creators to monetize directly from their fans. And this is where we've, what we think Web3 is making possible. Let's talk about the metaverse, NFTs, AI, gaming, blockchain, Ethereum, crypto, and decentralization. These are all buzzwords and keywords that fall under the umbrella of Web3. But ultimately what it is, it's an emergence of an open internet of value. The internet, the Web1 and Web2 was all about the exchange of value And Web3 has become the uh, has, was Web1 and Web2 was the exchange of information. Web3 is becoming the exchange of value. Uh, what it is is a fundamentally new approach to corporate governance, value creation, and stakeholder participation with equitable interests. So everybody wins. I like this quote by Chris Dixon, which says, "A truly digital economy is like a real-world bazaar." where everyone and anyone can create and trade goods and services. And I really like the bazaar analogy, uh, Wasimi. Then it kind of gets you to really feel Web3. Then when Wasimi says it's the era of the exchange of value, that's exactly what we're going to dig into today. We also think about it a little before we go into the history. We think about it a little before we go into the history. We think about it a little before we go into the history. internet access and our internet journey since it started and the internet started how we have been consumers of this internet web3 kinds of gives each and every one of us a key right away to not only be a consumer to be a creator that can make value right away لو بتلعب جيمز طول عمرك you can actually play games and make money لو رياضي طول عمرك you can move and earn لو بتكتب طول عمرك you can write and earn there are many things that you can do on this new version of the internet where we can actually make value بس قبل ما ندخل للحته اللي احنا جايين نتكلم عليها النهارده اللي هي بيسكلي ويب 3 او المستقبل اللي احنا we're looking forward to Let's actually look at the history of Web 1 and Web 2. And there is no clear definition. So when you look on the internet, what defines Web 1, what defines Web 2, Web 3, Web 3, there is no clear definition of that. But so what we know is, if you actually asked people in 1989, what they needed to make their lives better, it was unlikely that they would have said, A decentralized network of information nodes. يعني تخيلوا كده قبل الإنترنت والكهرباء شين بيسألوا الناس في الشارع إيه اللي إحنا محتاجينه عشان حياتنا تبقى أحسن الناس قالت لهم سلوك متصلة بعض وكمبيوترات عليها information. ف people were not there yet, and that was the norm. لأن we were living a world without that technology, and that's exactly what we're living now with Web3. إن إحنا في مرحلة where there's something new coming that we're learning about it, but still, ما حدش متخيل المستقبل هيبقى عامل إزاي. A brief history is in the internet as we know it. kind of متقسمه into two clear phases. The first phase is Web 1.0. ابتدت من سنة 91 ل almost mid 2000s, 2004. And this is when the internet was completely read only. 
كانت الانترنت دي عبارة عن شبكة اتحطت وبقينا كلنا نفسنا نقرأ حاجة عليها الواحد كان علشان مثلا a very good example is blogging مين هنا عموما كتب حاجة على الانترنت a post, a tweet, a blog مين دخل حاجة على الانترنت I think معظمنا كتبنا انبوت على الانترنت في الاول في اوائل الايام ما كانش سهل كده ان انت تفتح وتحط تويت او تحط بوست كنت اكشلي لازم تتعلم اتش تي ام ال وتعمل صفحه وتحط فيها كود والكود ده في النص تكتب فيه هاي ماي نيم از احمد علشان الناس بقى في العالم كله وي وير فاسينيتد ان ازاي حد في دوله ثانيه هيدخل يشوف صفحه اسمها احمد دوت اتش تي ام ال ويشوف المعلومات عني ات واز ريد اونلي انترنت في نص الالفينات كده With the emerging, وبرضو it happened with emerging technologies. يعني أما الناس أخذت الإنترنت دي واشتغلت عليها وطورت وبقى في languages programming زي الجافا وزي الفلاش وبقى في حاجات تخلي اليوزرز يinteractوا أكتر مع الإنترنت أو مع النتورك الكبيرة دي. Web 2 started happening. لأن big platforms started creating user experience where we can not only read the content لا ده احنا ممكن نكتب كمان ده احنا ممكن نشير الستاتس بتاعنا ممكن نشير احنا فين so we started becoming writers on the internet but surprisingly enough that turned us into consumers as well لان we were giving these platforms a lot of our content it was all about user generated content حتى كان يقول لك فيسبوك بيكبر the more we post the more you put pictures so we put in a lot of content on that internet Yet we didn't create any value for ourselves. طلعنا في الآخر consumers, but we enjoyed it. محدش كان متداي. Until basically something happened early 2009, a white paper طلعت حد كتبها anonymous لحد النهاردة محدش يعرفه اسمه ساتوشي ناكاموتو واحد باسم محدش يعرفه طلع white paper حطها على الإنترنت قال لك في تكنولوجيا جديدة هتغير الطريقة اللي بنعمل بيها peer to peer payments. يعني من هنا ورايح مش هنضطر نبعت لبعض فلوس بالطرق التقليدية where يبقى في النص فيه بنك وفي النص فيه مؤسسة وفي 2.5% فيزا هو حط white paper بيقول using the technology I'm writing I'm now showcasing to everyone in the world we're going to be using this technology علشان نعمل a cashless system of peer-to-peer -peer payments that is super secure ومن غير أي losses في النص فاللي عايز يحول لحد حاجة هيحولها له بالضبط وهتوصل في ساعتها Blockchain technology دي basically started and to simplify it زي ما احنا كنا في Web 1 و Web 2 كل فكرنا عن ال data وبتتسجل فين ان هي بتتسجل في centralized locations في servers هتلاقوا كل شركة فيها server room اوضه فيها تكييف واجهزة كتير عليها كل المعلومات بتاعة الشركة فالانترنت اللي احنا عشناها لحد ويب 2 لحد النهارده معظمها was about centralizing data تحطها في حته واحده you secure it you encrypt it and then some specific people have access to these data only if you work on in facebook's data room هتعرف تخش وتتعامل مع الديتا روم بتاع فيسبوك غير كده it's secured somewhere with the blockchain technology جه الراجل اللي هو ساتوشي ناكاموتو ده قال حاجه جديده قال لا we can decentralize the way we store networks and send and store the data بتاعتنا على nodes all over the world where everyone can actually encrypt the data بتاعته دي بشكل او باخر او people are going to work on encryption is going to be safe secure مش هيبقى في اي حاجه lost في النص مش هتبقى هتبقى immutable ما حدش يعرف يغير فيها لان هي هتبقى عندنا كل عمل a new technology in simple words blocks that store data in every block فيها الأدرس بتاع البلوك اللي قبلها والأدرس بتاع البلوك اللي بعدها والبلوكس دي مرمية على كل الكمبيوترز around the globe so you don't really need one big server في المعلومات لا المعلومات متسيفة في كل حتة and this basically started let's actually look at that Naval a very uh, prominent figure in that world now is saying the blockchains are a new invention that allows meritorious participants in an open network to govern without a ruler and without money. هنا التكنولوجيا هي اللي هتgovern the way we operate. هنا مش محتاجين حد يقول yes, approve or no. We're gonna write code that says على ايه الحاجات اللي عايزينها to basically work. So no one tells you anything. It's decentralized. And as society, زي ما احنا كده كشعوب مع بعض, we give each either each other money. For providing the society what it wants, the blockchains are going to give its users tokens because they do what it wants at the end of the day. So how do you incentivize had then we encrypted data, for You give them more tokens on that network, and this is how the token economy, a Web three, is starting a world where everyone has access to a decentralized network. كلنا ممكن نشوف إيه اللي بيحصل عليها وكلنا we can directly engage, write, read, and create value out of that.
بس قبل ما نخش اكتر I believe it's good to see how the age of decentralization we're living to is affecting where we are to kind of have a brighter look على اللي جاي اكتر على الايج بقى of complete decentralization يعني انا I don't think it we're ever going to go to complete decentralization decentralization هيبقى في two parallel paths Centralization path, decentralization. we're going to keep on the centralization, but there's an underworld where people prefer the decentralization uh, path. And I think through time, the more people are going to adopt decentralization, and there will still be centralized, centralized platforms, but less so. But the result in the last 20 years, we built millions of networks. We're cool. We need to go to Facebook and we create an account and we give them the data and that data stays with Facebook. We can go to YouTube, go to Instagram. Each new platform that we want to participate in, we need to give them the same amount of data. Well, data deep down with them. But also throughout the last 20 years, there's a problem. And we have a lot. 1.7 billion people around the world are still unbanked. But out of the 1.7 billion, 1 billion have access to a mobile phone, when us the billion dollars have access to internet. So technology is outpacing the ability for financial markets and institutions to provide capital uh, to, the un to the unbanked. With the same the Web2 the web required us to trust a lot of comp centralized companies, very much so. Google, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon, it required us to trust them with all our data and for them to create new products and provide better experiences. But what we saw in the last 20 years is that there is a predictable life cycle that all these centralized platforms follow. What happens is that in the beginning, they start attracting users, partners, and media at all costs to grow. And they start, they, they, they start off by cooperating with us until they reach a certain point where they are extracting and begin competing. And that's what we see with especially the four tech giants. فاللي شايفينه ان there's a power dynamic between platforms and content creators that which is massively imbalanced. في يوم وليلة someone can change the rules of the game and we've seen it on Instagram. If any of you are creators there, sometime one day they change the rules. مرة واحدة ما فيش ريتش. مش فاهمين ليه. And when you lose the reputation and you you end up losing the reputation and following when you decide to leave the platform. خلاص Instagram we don't want to use it. Something happened. One reason or another, and push on TikTok, you need to build the following all over again. In Web3, you can actually take these assets with you. For more on that. Yeah. So basically, with Web3, it's as easy as the internet. Everything we produce on it, we own it. It's ours. I can own my piece of writing, I can own my video, I can own my song, and everyone would know that I'm the unique owner of this specific piece, and I can use it the way I want. I can actually monetize minil, ayyan kind of content bitaida, wherever I want. And we're gonna go through that. Some of the very cool examples, we, we maybe have mentioned Habba Min Noam, but the play to earn. Play to earn, the people playing games, making money. Economies in the Corona, Zayena Kela economies were 100 and 200 dollars a month would make a difference in people's lives. Alfay Mitin Dolor Feshara and then I will wait almost Sarbatalev Gene. These, this is an income for your family. Some gamers are playing and making 200 and 300 dollars a month because of the use of this technology. And we're going to get through it. And not only play to earn, but move to earn, stake to earn. Yani, a hot. أوفر الفلوس بتاعتي أو أدخرها and then I earn more money. Learn to earn. There are platforms where you can learn new things and if you learn it the right way, you make money. لأن by learning, I will submit a micro assignment عند شركة محتاجة الحاجة دي and I'll be making money right away if I deliver my what I learn. I can create to learn and participate to earn. On Web3, في الحقيقة data بتاعتنا عايشة على ال blockchain وكلنا عندنا نقدر ندخل نسكان البلوك تشين ده ونشوفه and when we decide to leave a platform زي ما كان وسيمي بيقول من شوية if I decide to leave YouTube I'll need to build a base on TikTok on Web3 I don't if I sell my NFTs on OpenSea I'll be able to transfer them to another open market uh, to أي حاجة and I'll take my followership with me core ideas basically of Web3 and then we're going to dig right away into application and this is when it's going to get much more cooler of how people now are using this technology but the core idea is Web3 is decentralized we've, we've, we've said that 
Web3 has native payments. So علشان it's built on a blockchain network that was initially built to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer payments. But Web3 entails payments by nature. Web3 is permissionless. No one needs to give you a permission to access a decentralized app. علشان هي decentralized وعلشان انت as a user you will decide what to share with it so you don't need to take permission from anyone and web3 is trustless yani a it's algorithms written and we need to and we we don't have an option not to trust them while in web2 we actually needed to trust a lot of third party platforms and applications with our data بكل بساطة web3 users interact with decentralized applications with the identity they choose by connecting their wallet in web1 it was read only ما حدش فينا كان اصلا بيدخل user name و password على حاجة كنا بنخش نقرا it was like a global uh, library كنا بنخش كلنا نتصفح المكتبة الكبيرة في web2 لا ابتدينا ندي الناس ال ال inputs بتاع ال data بتاعتنا we started signing in with google with facebook وابتدينا نحط الكونتنت بتاعنا in web3 we're gonna create wallets that have what we really decide to have in them يعني can have a wallet يبقى فيها اسمي او يبقى فيها صورتي او ما يبقاش فيها الاثنين ويبقى فيها سني بس and I log in with this wallet into any of the decentralized applications with this definitely kind of is very clear how web3 is fairer لان دلوقتي لو فكرتوا هتلاقوا ان web2 giants البلاتفورمز الكبيره اللي بتحكم الانترنت في الويب2 their take rates from the creators الفلوس اللي بياخدوها من الناس اللي بتعمل كونتنت is much higher than what web3 offers if you look an average of 30 45 or even 100% of everything that is put into the network you as a user can't monetize من now while in, for example on the biggest marketplace for web3 دلوقتي the marketplace would only take 2.5% to maintain itself لان the value is yours you're the one providing the real value not the technology وفي الاخر definitely web3 aligns network participants to work together towards a common goal the growth of the network we're gonna see a very good example of that in gaming ان ازاي لو كلنا اتفقنا ان احنا هنعمل حاجه the value inside is gonna go huge as long as we're getting ourselves and we're aligned on one goal Yes, uh, so ultimately Web3 is a fairer and more transparent internet. And I think this is something that is worth betting on. Uh, we're going to go over some examples of Web3 applications. احنا كلنا تمام so far. تمام. All right. الحته الجايه هي الحته الرابت هول قوي بقى. احنا كل اللي فات ده كنا بنتكلم ان that's how it started. This is what we know ان احنا وصلنا لهنا. الحته بقى اللي جايه is where we are actually going to be exploring the applications of this technology. تمام. Yes, yeah. uh, and many are calling the Web3 the ownership economy. Well, this is a snapshot of the day-to-day. -day. Yani, uh, the ownership economy, collectors, artists, NFTs, decentralized finance, metaverse, tools, platforms, investments, collaboration, uh, you name it. But what we're going to focus on today is the basic infrastructure layer, uh, low blockchain. Uh, and we're going to use Ethereum as an example. But then we have NFTs. Decentralized finance or DeFi, DAOs, which are decentralized autonomous organizations, and gaming. We'll start with blockchain and we'll talk about Ethereum. The Ethereum blockchain HOA is the largest and the most well established open ended decentralized software platform. Uh, think of it as the App Store for Apple. It can be any developer who can build an application on the App Store. Ethereum is open and decentralized and anyone can build on it. And you think of it as an entertainment park. اي ممكن تخش انترتينمنت بارك وبتشتري بفلوسك توكنز وممكن تخش وتلعب لعبه اني بادي كان ديزاين ذير اون جيم اور ذير ديسنتراليزد ابلكيشن اون ذا ايثيريوم اند كرييت ذير اون جيم اند بيلد ذير اون ميني ايكونومي في الجيم ده او اول حاجه هنا يا وسيمي ان واتس انترستنج وذ ايثيريوم ان افتر ذي بيسيكلي يوز ذا بلوك تشين تكنولوجي تو ترانسكرايب ترانزاكشنز بلوك تشين ابتدت ان عايزين نقول من هنا لهنا فلوس اتنقلت The Ethereum people, the people who developed Ethereum, they realized that we can use the same exact blockchain technology. But the better, but some man put in the block the transaction. But all men Ahmed to Wasimi X amount of money. That we can put in much more data in the same block and have it stored decentralized for all the data. So they started using the technology in a different way that basically now has un, يعني limitless usages. And we're going to look at some of them. Exactly. Uh, essentially, in the Ethereum blockchain, anyone who is on the network has permission to use the service, uh, or in other words, permission is not required. 
No one can block you or deny you, deny you access to, to the service. Payments are built in via the native token, which is Ether or ETH. And Ethereum is Turing complete, meaning you can pretty much program anything on Ethereum. And I'll give you some practical uh, comparisons. For Web2, Twitter can censor any account or tweet. In Web3, using Ethereum, Web3 tweets would be uncensorable because control is decentralized. In Web2, payment service may decide to not allow payments for certain types of work. But in Ethereum, Web3 payment apps require no personal data and can't prevent payments. In Web2, the servers for gig economy apps could go down and affect worker income. In Web3, servers cannot go down. They use Ethereum, a decentralized network of thousands of computers, as their backend. There are many other options for developers to build on blockchains. Uh, Fee Solana, which is really picking up, uh, Polygon, Binance Chain, Avalanche, and Phantom. But Ethereum is still attracting the most developers, uh, whereas Solana is and he has uh, the similar is on a similar uh, tra tra trajectory. For next, let's dive into uh, NFTs uh, soon. ممكن اسال سؤال الحته اللي فاتت يعني this specifically this last slide او these names الاسماء دي ملخبطه ناس كثيره يعني في حد ما شاف كل الاسماء دي جنب بعض اتلخبط؟ <تصفيق> interesting دول كلهم different applications of the blockchain technology مجموعه هنود عملوا بوليجون قال لك ايثيريوم دي بتاخد وقت ان احنا مثلا نعمل الترانزاكشن هنعمل حاجه تانية. these are all applications of the same technology اللي طلعت في 2009 اللي بتقول يا جماعه ازاي هندي لبعض فلوس من غير حاجات في النص other people are taking the same technology and building different their own variations and applications on them واحنا بقى as creators we can use any of these networks to basically code whatever we want on it whether it's a website application or the things we're going to speak اللي عليها يعني now we're going to be digging اكتر towards حتى the kind of made this popular which is nfts مين سمع على nfts Who heard about NFT? رائع. مين شاف الشاب ده؟ بقى مشهور جدا. يعني بس بس يعني عنده uh, عنده واحد بورد يا ريت يعني امبارح <تصفيق> وانا بعمل ريسيرش يعني وانا بحضر كده and I think this is coming in, in this slide I can get it right away وانا قاعد بعمل ريسيرش كده بشوف بس عشان اقول لكم حاجه انترستنج على بيك ده واكمل لكم الشرح. There was one ape اللي هو الشيء ده القرد ده اتباع امبارح وانا بحضر ب 456000 دولار. اوكي وانا قاعد كده بشوف كده لقيت ترانزاكشن في واحد اشترى القرد قلت ايه ده ادخل اقول للناس بقى بقى ثمنه كام طلع 456000 دولارز اند ذاتس ان ان اف تي سو بيسكلي تو ستارت وذ ان اف تيز ار نون فانجبل توكنز يعني ايه اصلا فانجبل فانجبل يعني انترتشينجبل يعني ايه انترتشينجبل يعني ممكن يستبدل بحاجه ثانيه ا فيري ايزي انالوجي اون ذات از ماي بيت انالوجي تخيلوا كده And I own pets. I own dogs. Who owns pets? Min عنده حيوانات أليف. رائع. I own I own two dogs. فتخلو كده إن أنا وأنا مسافر إن شاء الله مثلاً العيد الويك إند الجاي رحت وديت الكلب بتاعي ل they call it boarding places. الأماكن اللي هي بتاخد الكلب بتاعي كده يهتموا بيه يومين لحد ما أنت ترجع من السفرية مثلاً. تخلو أنا وديت الكلب بتاعي للمكان ده ورجعت بعدها يوم الحد أستلم الكلب قالوا لي هو ده. جابوا لي كلب نفس السن، نفس البريد، نفس اللون بس مش الكلب بتاعي، يعني بناديب اسمه مش بيرد عليا. والراجل قال لي اتس ذا سيم ثينج، هو نفس الكلب، نفس سنه، نفس البريد، ما فيش أي حاجة مختلفة، وايل إن رياليتي ماي بيت إز نون فانجبل، صح؟ يو كانوت انترشينج إت كده فور أي حاجة وتديهوني. This is exactly the idea of digital art that is non fungible، يعني أنا هرسم صورة هحطها على الإنترنت وهقول إن دي بتاعتي ما حدش تاني يقدر يبدلها بحاجة ليها قيمة مادية. You cannot tell me إن ده قيمته 10 جنيه، هو ده قيمته أنت اللي بتحددها. You basically create the value for things that are non-fungible. A token is a digital transferable asset. فده digital transferable asset that is interchangeable, that is not interchangeable، ما تقدرش تبدله. و basically the NFTs utilize the same technology the cryptocurrencies are built on which is blockchain بس الفكرة ان the NFTs are files that live on that blockchain فالحتة دي تهيالي ممكن تبقى واضحة what's cool بقى is in because NFTs gave this technology a real interface for people to use it و ابتدى يطهر منه حاجات كتيرة ف the 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 discovery of NFTs and how it worked is kind of making everyone get into that world much faster. Because there are many applications you can use an NFT for a profile picture. Profile picture, kid, and a and everyone knows this is me, so I can now put it and I own it. 
Second thing is arts and music. I can NFT any piece of art or music and say, I'm going to do an NFT. That's its own NFT. No one can own it except if they buy it directly from Amr Diab, for example. I can play games using NFTs, or we're going to look at that. We can create utility with NFTs, which is super interesting. And an example that happened less than a month ago is basically a guy called Gary V. I'm an NFT. هيدخل كونفرنس انا هعمله انا اكشلي هعمل ثلاثة كونفرنسز في الثلاث سنين الجايين وباع منه 10000 واحده 10000 ان اف تي ومن شهر كان في 10000 واحد في استاد كوره في بوسطن بيحضروا الكونفرنس بس علشان معاهم الان اف تي ده هي يوز ذا ارت تو بيسكلي جيف بيبل اكسس تو ذس كونفرنس ولو فكرتوا فيها مين فينا ما احتفظش بتذكره مثلا ميوزيوم ولا تذكره قطر ولا تذكره حي... We all have kept things dear to our hearts because we just wanted that. Now the technology can give us this right away. I can create an entry pass بتاعكم للايفنت ده كله in a very nice picture that you will always have and everyone would know ان هي بتاعتكم وان انتم كنتوا واحد من ال100 اللي حضروا النهارده and you will always own it and you will get access to my event with that. And the last thing is virtual words. اللي احنا بقى بنسمعه الميتا لاندز والاراضي وان حد هيجيب ارض في الميتافيرس وياجرها لحد كده. Basically the blockchain technology is starting to see mainstream adoption with the NFTs علشان NFTs are making things more practical or easier to understand and you're gonna see Board API Club is one of the biggest projects of NFTs that basically started promising people a community of like-minded people. احنا كل اللي هنعمله نحنا زي النهاردة كده. We're all interested in that world. So guys, buy this ape and you're going to be one part of our community. So what happened is, and when this community started being built, واحدة واحدة, people started adopting. They liked the art. عجبهم شكله لذيز. ليه ما نشتريهوش ونشوف مين تاني اشتراه؟ because it's decentralized. I can see exactly مين اللي اشترى الايب ده امبارح او الوالد بتاعته. ف the community started becoming bigger. It started having adopters من بره community بره public people. So artists Eminem عنده واحد من دول وحطه في تويتر بتاعه. لو كتبته Eminem دلوقتي على تويتر هتلاقوا ال profile picture بتاعه ارد من دول. He's very happy telling everyone I'm one of the people adopting Web3. I bought this NFT, this profile picture. And I'm part of that group. And this is why it created so much value. This NFT in itself had a total sales of more than $2 billion. في آخر سنة بس هو ما كانش موجود قبل السنة اللي فاتت. And AIP 4171 ده اللي بقول لكم بقى امبارح ب 456,000. لو الناس بتدفع في ده فلوس. الناس بتدفع في ده فلوس. So they become part of the community and say we own it. I own it. وانا بقيت جزء من the community. Think of it as a big WhatsApp group. عليه 10,000 واحد. من الناس اللي بتدفع 456 الف في البتاع ده ف definitely if I bought my ape today tomorrow I would have great opportunities to basically work right away with these people وكلهم اتجمعوا من اسبوعين عملوا حفله في نيويورك سيتي وامن ام عمل كونسرت فده اليوتيليتي سايد من الان اف تي بوي دي بي اه صح والحته اللي اصيع كمان هنا بالذات ان يو اون ذا فول رايتس اوف يور ايب يعني انت مش بس بتشتري بروفايل بيكتشر كده تحطه عندك ده اللي الناس متخيله بس A, a very cool example, Netflix in the next couple of months, there's a very cool actor, واحد من الناس عم فرج عليهم في المسلسلات دي, اشترى واحد من الابس دي من ست شهور, وعلشان هو عنده الفول رايتس بتاعة الابس بتاعه, he's developing a show, هو والابس, يعني we're gonna be watching زي بوجي وطمطم كده, هو, and he doesn't really need to pay any license fee for that character, he doesn't need to pay royalty for anyone. مش شرط, مش شرط هو اللي يبني النتفلكس شو, ممكن حد تاني يبني النتفلكس شو, and, and, and licenses yeah, from. Rolling Stones actually paid the owner of that ape $100,000 علشان يحطوا صورته على الكفر بتاعهم. لان you own the art. It's not like you have it. هو بتاعك. Everyone knows. Yeah. Brands. Yeah, unless unless there's a way to validate that you own it on the chain, أيا كان مش لازم تبقى you paid for it. ممكن حد ي transfer it to you, but someone sent it to you on the chain. Exactly. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically the same. But now it's transcribed on a network. It's transcribed on a chain where everyone knows you have ownership of this. So it's exactly what we had, but we never had ownership on digital assets, except go a closed loops. And I'm thinking, can you have my coins? Kathira FIFA Tati. FIFA, I'm going to play it alone. I made coins on it. That's it's not for everyone to see. 
This is the beauty of that. And in the blockchains, everyone can see them. Brands also are adopting NFTs. These are some of the brands that are adopting NFTs only in the past month. With the NBA, Lisa, a month ago, launching Mean, we were going to stickers and we were going to put them in the albums so that we could collect all the world. We were going to get the album. They're basically doing that. They're doing it with, with digital art. You mean, you're going to put the money, you're going to take the pack, and you're going to get four cards of NBA, and you're going to put them in the album. But this album is not going to be a trap in the old shop, in the old shop. No, it's going to be with you forever on the internet, because we lose our collectibles. All the collectibles that we have, and the things that we have done, we have done with our relation, in the end, it's going to be stored in a place, where we don't have as easy access as we would have to our digital assets on the blockchain. The last example is Stepin. Stepin is changing the game now with Move to Earn, where people basically open a mobile application, buy a pair of shoes, which is like this, and you can make them upgrades and put them in things. And this is like this, if you can do it every day, you can do it up to $10. If you have three things, you can do it up to $50. If you can do it for 10 days, so I'm deciding as a user, if I'm the owner of these shoes, to share with them what? I'm sharing with them الروت بتاعي الفيتلز بتاعتي ما انا لابس سمارت واتش بتقول لهم انا فيعرفوا يستخدموا الداتا دي للشركات والشركات تستخدمها تديفلوب عليها حاجات بس اي ام ذا اونر اوف ماي داتا كاز اي اون ذيس شوز اي وود جيف ذيم بيرميشن تو نو الطريق اللي انا مشيته اي وود جيف ذيم بيرميشن تو نو ضربات قلبي ضغطي مش عارف ايه اند فور ذات اي دي ميكينج ماني تشيك ستيب ان دي كاز ناو بيبل ار كريزي اباوت ذات Everywhere in the world, you just buy it, get in. Ah, well, if you don't have money, you buy a shoe because the shoe is worthless. I've got people who have bought it. You can rent the shoes. I mean, I have a shoe that I bought the last week and I don't go to the gym for 10 days. I can rent it to someone in another part of the world. You can rent it to someone in another part of the world. You can rent it to someone in another part of the world. You can rent it to someone in another part of the world. You can rent it to someone in another part of the world. أنا آخد 30% من اللي عمله هو ياخد 70% من اللي اتعمل. And it's as easy as that. كلكم ممكن تنزلوا الابلكيشن you don't buy a shoes. Just rent one and start moving with it to earn. Okay? So it's definitely a whole new way for creators to monetize directly with fans. NFTs on an, its own sales بتاعتها عملت around 3.9 billion dollars only by 22,400 creators في السنتين اللي فاتوا وتخيلوا إن كل الكلام اللي إحنا بنقوله ده ما كانش موجود من سنتين أصلاً. So every creator was able to make more than $174,000, while the average of creators on any of the other platforms is not even near that. Okay? Moving back to decentralized finance. Mish, I'm going to talk a little bit, but I'm The second concept is DeFi, or we say decentralized finance. Essentially, it's the money Legos of the Web3. It allows anybody to trade with anyone directly. Without the need for a third party, it's a stock market, but it's 24/7, uh, where people can buy and trade, and also borrow money and lend money. That's simply what it is. Uniswap is one of the largest platforms, DeFi platforms for, for Web3, uh, and a very interesting case, which is called Goldfinch, which is helping. It's a platform that's helping lend crypto for emerging uh, for emerging markets. For they're really focusing on countries in Africa. Speaking of Africa, uh, it's interesting to note in Africa is dominating uh, the P2P transaction volume uh, when you're looking at Bitcoin and other crypto. Africa is dominating, and I think that's a very, very good sign. We, the decentralized, fi uh, decentralized finance platforms altogether have grown from zero to $100 billion in less than two years. So that's an insane amount of money, and this is only growing. And Binance, one of the largest players, Uh, in this space, has recently, Lisa for the last few has partnered with uh, Cristiano and Ronaldo. So hopefully, this will also increase mainstream adoption. Um, let's go quickly into gaming, uh, Basuni. Yeah, they were seeing a little bit. Gaming was a very good example of Web3. Why? Because it's in the middle of what gamers already did. The last few years, 20% of NFT sales, the volume, was gaming-related assets. So gamers adopted it right away. 40% of crypto wallet activity. Uh, 40% of crypto wallet activity actually comes from gaming, and 50 plus live Web3 games with more than 1,000 unique on-chain users are happening as we speak. فكرة الجيمنج بقى هنا أخذت موضوع الموف تو إيرن اللي إحنا لسه من شوية يعني خدت بالي كده الناس اللي هو ده ممكن to another level بقى. إزاي 
جيمرز ا جيمنج كومباني شركه شركه بتعمل العاب طول عمرنا بنلعب لعب اند احنا از يوزرز وي انفست ان اتليست اور تايم ان ات مش احنا وي كلنا مقتنعين ان تايم ايكوالز ماني ف وي انفست ان اور تايمز في الجيمز دي وبعدين بعد شويه بنزهق فبنطلع براها فكل الفاليو اللي احنا وي كرييتد انسايد اللعبه دي بيروح اي كان بلاي كلاش اوف كلانز فور ا يير واسيبها خلاص كده الجيم ما بقتش موجوده يوزنج ذا بلوك تشين اتس ا بيت ديفرنت ان اي كان ترانسفير ايفريثينج اي اوند ان ذات جيم to someone else and this is what basically axi infinity did عملوا جيم الابطال بتوعه هم الكور اللي شكلها غريب دي كريتشرز شكلها شبه البوكيمونز كده عندها فاير وارث وجراس اتس ا جيم تريدين كارد جيم انا بحط ثلاث كروت وانت بتحط ثلاث كروت واللي كروته احسن بيكسب بس الجيم دي عشان اخش فيها فانا هشتري الاكسيس دول از ان اف تيز سو ناو اي ام جيفنج كرييترز اوف اللعبه ماني ان ذير بوكيت دايركتلي هم خلقوا اللعبه وبيقولوا اللي عايز يشتري البتاع دي يحط فلوس سو اي جيف ذم ماني ان ذير بوكيتس هم بقى ازاي يرجعوا لي فلوس از ا جيمر مش انا جبت وسيمي قلت له انا جبت الثلاثه دول ولعبوا معايا نوت ان بونزي سكيم واي بس وسيمي عشان يلعب اللعبه هي هاد تو باي ذا جيم كرييترز هي هاد تو باي ثلاث كروت عشان يخش بيهم فوسيمي بقى معاه ثلاث كروت انا بقى معايا ثلاث كروت نلعب بقى مع بعض طول ما احنا بنلعب وبن انجيج الجيم بيدينا بوينتس اللي حلو بقى ايه ان البوينتس دي بنطلع نحولها بفلوس رايت right اواي فالجيم بيدينا حاجه اسمها سموث لاف بوشن اما بنكسب الباتل انا باخد السموث لاف بوشن ده اللي كسبته النهارده يوازي 4 دولار اروح حاططهم على الدي فاي الدي سنترلايزد فاينانس واطلع ال 4 دولار من الناحيه الثانيه سو ذا جيمنج كومباني ميد ماني انا از ا يوزر ام ميكينج ماني كوز اي ام برينجينج ان مور تراكشن تو ذات جيم دو يو جيت ذا ايديا اللي حلو برده ان الجيم دي خلت او انيبلد ايكونوميز في سريلانكا مثلا تو ميك هندريدز اوف دولارز افري مانث ناس ما كانتش لاقيه شغل وقت الكورونا وازاي by scholarships يعني it's very hard برضه to get into that game مع الوقت بقت غاليه قوي عشان اجيب ثلاث كروت محتاج 1500 دولار معيش ال 1500 دولار بس في واحد تاني في امريكا انا شايف الوالد بتاعته عليها الثلاث كروت دول وما بيلعبش بيهم بقاله شهر ابعت له اقول له can you give me a scholarship العب انا بالكروت بتاعتك and I'll make money and split it with you do you guys see the economy how it went there are hundreds of thousands Of people who made at least $200 from that game السنة اللي فاتت وقت الكورونا. في ناس في الفلبينز they make $500 a month and the average income is $200 a month. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy. بالظبط yeah. في الفلبينز يعني oh. بتقدر تعمل أكتر من الأفريج بتاع ال... وهنا في مصر هتبقى نفس oh. الفكرة. And the last thing is in this gaming world is not only بقى on its own لا ده براندز كمان بتخش فيه يعني one of the big games now and I know this game because my kid who's five years old بيلعبها and it's in its And, and it's not it's a game it's a decentralized game حاجه كده تدخل تقعد تمشي ما بتعملش اي ما فيش هدف بس البراندز بتخلق جواها realities and it gives the creators to create realities inside and لسه forever 21 they just said that they're on the track to sell 1.5 million digital hoodies or beanies يعني انا علشان الكاركتر بتاعي يبقى شكله حلو جوه اللعبه هشتري الهودي ده من forever 21 وابقى البسته and everyone would know واكشي ممكن اديه لحد او ابيعه so برضو anything that we would be paying in a game would be transferable to someone else or can be sold right away once I'm done with the game okay اخر حاجه هنتكلم عليها هي الداوز decentralized autonomous organizations Uh, what corporation, corporations organize the industrial age, DAOs will organize the internet, internet age. It's essentially a new way of forming a company on Web3. Uh, Vitalik Buterin, who is the Vitalik Buterin, who is the founder of Ethereum, said that a DAO is an entity that lives on the internet and exists autonomously, but also heavily relies on hiring individuals to perform certain tasks that the automation itself cannot do. So think about it in the, in, in, in the automation and technology at the core and the humans are left to do what they are do what what they do best for so ultimately it's a new way to coordinate measure and reward contributions to complex ecosystems in the space فعندنا الشركه هي على الشمال it's like a triangle uh, it's very tight hierarchical usually not transparent invite only and it's not always global in a dao it's more loose grassroots transparent open and fully global I can create a DAO with people all around the world, زي ما بسوني عمل مع Core NFT. But what it ultimately seeks to do is pro provide members with a voice through governance, flatten the hierarchy, and create fluid work streams, and allocate resources to achieve a core mission. 
لما نشوف الاناتومي اوف داو عندنا الكور كونتريبيوترز اعتبرهم الناس اللي في الشركه النهارده دول الناس اللي فولي ديديكيتد فول تايم في شركه اند ذن وي هاف ذا باونتي هانترز دول اللي سيرفيس بروفايدرز او الناس اللي يو وونت تو اوت سورس اند ذن يو هاف ذا نتورك كونتريبيوترز زي ما احنا بنخش دلوقتي وي ار كونتريبيوترز اوف فيسبوك ويوتيوب اند ذن وي هاف توكن هولدرز توكن هولدرز دول الناس اللي بيستثمروا في الداو او الناس اللي جنرالي اني وان كان ناو بيكم ان انفستر ان ا فيسبوك او ا يوتيوب اف ات واز سيت اب از ا داو So it's more flat, and these are the core layers that go into a DAO. Very good see, uh, quote, and I hope you like the next generation of business is where no one is a CEO. Rather, everyone is a CEO. Everyone is an owner, and everyone has invested interest in whatever network that they want to participate in. So ultimately, it gives you more autonomy over where, when, and how we work. As an example, fee friends with benefits. It's a very famous DAO uh, where worldwide group of people, uh, creators, thinkers, and builders they get they get together, and uh, whether digitally or in real life, and they decide on how they're going to shape Web 3's future. So, uh, there's an FWB token for DAO, uh, and it's a way to collectively fund and govern the community and what they decide to create together. Uh, BitDAO is a DAO created by Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel is one of the made big investors uh, who invested in Facebook, or Uber. Uh, he started a DAO to help Bordeaux people build together ecosystems around Web3. And then there's the Pleaser DAO, which is a group of people who are very passionate about, about art. They collectively decide on which art pieces they're going to invest in, and they're getting into fractionalized art. So instead of me owning this piece, piece of painting, Collectively, we can own pixels of this painting. So if anyone sells this painting, we all get rewarded for the investment. If you have an example, you can tell me what I'm going to tell you. Now, 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 is a very interesting Bardo uh, DAO uh, worth looking into. And there are many, many DAOs. There are over 500 DAOs, if not thousands of DAOs uh, in this landscape from DAO operating systems. So you can operate a DAO, investment DAOs, grant DAOs, protocol DAOs, and service DAOs. Uh, and there's DAO tools to help you build a DAO. Uh, and I think this is a space that we're very interested in. These are all tools. Hopefully, we'll share this presentation with, with you all so you can better have the tools to create DAOs and uh, experiment with it. And it's worth noting that DAOs are, have accumulated more than $10 uh, billion dollars in treasury assets under management. Uh, That's it. Um, back to the monopoly example. If we want to start a if we want to create a monopoly game, we'll form a DAO to try and create our own monopoly game and set the rules of the game. The currency of this game is going to be the token of our own DAO. Uh, the, 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 the pieces that represent us, you can think of it as an NFT, and we can take this piece and go and play in another game, and it's still, we still carry our identity. So hopefully this example worked, and you guys can, uh, can use it to explain Web3 further. And we're still very early in the game. The orange line shows the trajectory of the internet, and we reached 1 billion internet users in 2005, and the other three lines are the Ethereum addresses. Fahna, today, it's like we are in 1995, if you compare it to the internet. In 2031, we will reach where the internet reached in 2005. But it's very early. So it's, back, it's like we're 1994, 1995 again. Imagine going back, and there was still no Google, there was still no Facebook. These companies and organizations, and potentially who are going to be DAOs, There's a, still a lot of time. And people were saying, "Ma bayash waqtak al internet." يعني اللي هو سيب بقى ده وعمل ال يعني بلاش تضيع وقتك على شيء جديد ده. But that's exactly where we are today. Yes, there are still many limitations in the space from scalability, accessibility, uh, UX, and cost. It does cost a lot, Bardo, to uh, to to develop and leave the, your code on the blockchain. Let's quickly go into how we can start building for Web3. Um, we believe that if each and every one of us can build their own ventures and receive the, the necessary support, the world will be more fair, more creative, and more generous. Uh, uh, Basuni being from Opener, a VC, early stage VC fund, and myself, Curious Labs, which is a Web3 focused venture studio. Uh, more into what we are doing at Curious Labs, we support, builder, we support builders in being a one-stop shop 
so that they can build and launch their Web3 projects easily. We provide them access to Web3 talent as well. Our focus is going to be on building smart contracts, decentralized applications, and uh, digital assets. Ultimately, our goal is to build a complete ecosystem for builders to bootstrap and fund their, their projects. With the major difference that we see between Web2 startups and Web3 startups, in Ahnaf Web2, we're used to seeing seeds, Series A, Series B, C, and D. In Web3, you raise a seed and a Series A, but then you really want to rely on the community and the governance so that they can fund the project and so that you can grow. For a cap table, we have two cap tables for Web3 ventures. We have the equity cap table and the token cap table, right? So you have the own governance token, and that's where the community comes in and invests and funds the, the ecosystem. Uh, there's a 15% allocated for the treasury, and this is what's used to facilitate and keep the, 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 the network running. And 15% that gets translated into the equity table. A bit technical, but it's worth noting that it's a different, uh, it's a different beast when you're forming uh, Web3 ventures. And it can be much faster, you see me. And what's interesting, and you can build on Web3 in a much faster way because you're able to make value right away. Yani no one in the past 10 years was able to create a game that can have a valuation of a billion dollars without a big gaming studio. Yeah. If you do a very simple version of it and 10 people buy, you make the money in your pocket right away. So you take this money and make it more advanced. This is how Axie Infinity became a billion and more than a billion. People are giving me money right away, so I'm able to, you really, a slide but at a raising with startups, you can start something, create value, and owners will be giving you money. You won't need to go further in rounds because your traction is making you money. Yeah? Yes. If you're a developer and uh, want to build for Web3, uh, this is a suggested tech stack. There are way more tools. This is Taban Solidity as the language, web3.js. Uh, for APIs, you want to use the graph blockchain. Definitely recommend building on the Ethereum blockchain. And for using identity and data protocols, you want to use something like Ceramic and Filecoin for data storage. Uh, Taban, you want to keep in mind that it, it's a much longer development life cycle with Web3. Uh, and you want to make sure that you, uh, it's all about speed of iteration and not necessarily the quality of iteration. Um, uh, Web3 demands focusing on rapid execution ahead of planning and strategizing. Uh, community engagement is going to be key uh, and a critical skill to hone in when, when building Web3 uh, projects, because really at the heart of it, it's all about the community before even having the need of a product. So you need to have a strong purpose and a mission-driven team with a strong community behind you. Um, and you want to focus on the details, not features. So making sure that you know the, the, the incentive structure and the tokenization of everything and the business model is everything is, is good and the, the network participants are incentivized to stay on the platform and keep funding and investing in it. Uh, and one thing to note definitely in the country that we're in or the region is we want to prepare for regulatory co concerns uh, and make sure that we are in a position and be key players to actually help educate people on why Web3 is going to help um, people wealthier and deliver more value and create more value in the market. And last but not least, you want to learn about crypto economics. Uh, this is really the, the new skill or the subject or topic in the space. Uh, is understanding incentivized models underlying the distributed blockchain protocols. And that is a combination of game theory, which is investigating human behavior and possible outcomes, as well as economics the production, distribution, and the consumption of goods and services. And finally, cryptography, which is the underlying essence of cryptocurrency, which is constructing and analyzing protocols. Uh, we personally are looking for Web3 developers, blockchain engineers, game designers, cybersecurity experts, community managers, AR, VR designers, crypto artists and product managers, and much more. Uh, we believe Web3 is a future worth building for, and it promises a more for fulfilling and uh, outcomes-focused way of work with a fairer distribution of ownership and rewards. Ultimately, we think also that countries and companies and institutions who embrace this new technology will advance their competitiveness globally uh, in this always-on, economically equitable future. Are you ready to build? Thank you. Um, 
we've taken some time. I don't know how much time we have for questions. قبل ما ندخل مين دخل الهول بقى يعني مين على اخر 45 دقيقه كده حس ان اخر معلومات دي خلاص دخلت كده جوه خالص وصلناكم لحته لسه مين لسه مش فاهم ويب 3 و كل انا مش فاهم يعني انا لسه مش ان ذاتس ذا ايديا ان ما حدش فينا اكشلي لسه فاهم حاجه لان اتس 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 طب ثانية بس واحدة واحدة عشان عايزين تاني آه يعني مين اللي عايز يسأل سؤال وهندي له المايك عشان سو ذات وي كان ريكورد ات اوكي سو في حد كان بيسأل سؤال هنا؟ yeah. اتفضل آه انتوا حضراتكم قلتوا ان واحد ممكن بيكون بيلعب جيم ويكسب فلوس هو الفلوس دي هتجيب ازاي؟ الجيم بيدي له فلوس ما هو علشان يخش الجيم ده دفع فلوس للناس اللي عملت الجيم تمام صح؟ آه. فالناس اللي عملت الجيم دي ازاي تخلي ناس تانية أكتر تيجي تجيب الجيم؟ تكافئ الناس اللي بتلعب الجيم ط- فهو من الفلوس اللي احنا كلنا دافعينها للجيم ميكرز آه. مش باخد كل فلوسي ما انا مش بدخل انا اصلا مش بلعب اللعبه عشان اعمل معيشه انا بلعب اللعبه تو انجوي ماي تايم بس اي ام ميكينج ريورد اوت اوف ات ذا جيم ميكرز ار انسنتيفاينج مي علشان انا انسنتيفاي ناس ثانيه تخش النتورك بتاعه الجيم دي باي جيفينج مي توكنز والتوكنز دي ليها قيمه طيب اوكي اني اذر كويستشن يا في قرد مش في الصورة بس في الـ في الـ في الـ في الـ في, في, في العملات دي كلها خسران طبعا مين بقى؟ طبعا الكونسيومرز اللي بيعملوا يعني هقول لك يعني حاجة فكرة انه مين اللي هيدفع له الفلوس يعني هقول لك انا I've been reading a lot about the Ponzi scheme idea of ان ما طول ما في ناس داخلة في ناس ممكن تبقى بتعمل فاليو لحد ما هتقف at a point بس the idea of the application of it يعني if it's a game فاحنا طول عمرنا بنلعب جيمز وطول عمرنا كونسيومرز صح؟ عمرنا ما حد فينا فرق له ان هو بيلعب ما عملش 10 جنيه من ال 50 اللي دفعهم تبع تمن اللعبه تمام وال 10 جنيه اللي هم هيدوها لنا دي كانت في الحقيقه اصحاب اللعبه بيدفعوها الماركتنج كومبانيز علشان تروح لناس ثانيه تشتري اللعبه فدا ايديا از يور نوت بلاينج ذا جيم تو ميك ويلث انا مش بلعب اللعبه عشان ابقى غني انا بلعب اللعبه عشان بحب بلعب اللعبه والشركه مش محتاجه تعمل ماركتنج ممكن تديني الفلوس في جيبي وانا اجيب ناس اكتر سو اتس جاست ا ديفرنت واي اوف ايكونومكس اند اتس يس هارد تو انديرستاند كاز وي ار نوت يوز ما انفستد في الاكس ار بي فاهم السيستم شويه بتاع البلوك تشين بس عندي ثلاث مشاكل عاوزكم برضو عاوز اعرف اراءكم فيها اول حاجه انا بعتبر الاونر بتاع الحاجه دهيت عشان الادرس طب لو انا نسيته طب الميدييتور ما هو في ميدييتور في الاخر زي بايننس دي اول حاجه، تاني حاجه الداتا بتاعتي مش برايفت مش بس كومباني بتاون ده الناس كلها قادره تشوفها دي تاني مشكله مشكله كبيره جدا. تالت حاجه السنترلايزيشن فيها مشكله برضه الماينرز ذات نفسهم في حد فيهم يعني ميجر واخد الماجوريتي بتاعت الماينينج فهو برضه يقدر يلعب فيها ولو حد عنده كمبيوتنج باور عنده مشكله عنده قدره ان هو يقدر يلعب في دي زي كوانتم انت قلت ثلاث حاجات تعال نقولهم بسرعه <تصفيق> اول حاجه يعني جاست تو انديرستاند اللي انت قلته صح اتس يور توكن بالادرس بتاعك وات هابنز اف يو لوز ات نو ون ايلس ويل هاف اكسس تو ات عشان كده بيقول لك اس محفظتك لو ضاعت بس هي ضاعت بقى في الفيرتشوال وورلد ما حدش هيكلمك ويرجعها لك انت محتاج تعرف الباسورد بتاعتها بكل الاشكال فذاتس ذا فيرست ثينج اف يو لوست ات نو ون ايلس وود هاف اكسس تو ات نوت ايفن يو تاني حاجة بايننس از نوت ا ديسنترلايزد ويب 3 ابلكيشن بايننس از ون اوف ذا سنترلايزد ديفايز اوكي في ديفايز تانية زي كو كوين تشيك ات اوت اتس كومبليتلي ديسنترلايزد ما بيبقاش عارف انت مين اصلا يعني بايننس بياخد اسمك والايدنتيتي بتاعتك وكده عشان يعرف يديك سيرفيس ذير ار اذر دي ديفايز ذات دونت اسك يو فور يور نيم بس برضه يو دونت ليف يور ماني ان اذر بيبلز واليتس ذا هول ايديا اوف ذيز اكسشينج بلاتفورمز از يو كان تريد اون ذيم احنا عمرنا ما كان عندنا فرصه ان احنا نخش البورصه في خمس دقائق انا بكره انا دلوقتي حالا عايز اشتري سهم فوري ما كانش عندنا الاوبشن ده ان انا اخش اشتري دلوقتي السهم ذيس از وات ديفاي از جيفنج يو انستنت اكسس فانا بشتري السهم لو بعته اي ميك ماي ماني رايت اواي سو دونت ليف يور ماني اون سنترلايزد اكسشينجز من الاخر always keep it on your cold wallet on your wallet not in their treasury لان they own it not you until you withdraw it from them ثالث سؤال ده صعب يعني لو كل حاجه كبيره ده يعني هي الدنيا كل يعني it's really something that we don't know about and we're learning day in day out and it might not feel natural Yeah, it might not feel natural to everything we've been living with the internet for the past 15 years لان احنا we were the internet's first generation يعني 
ف اي اجري ان اتس هارد تو اندرستاند بس ميبي باي تايم ويل كيب اون كليرنج ثينجز ثانك يو انا بس انا ليا نوتس كده وعايز حضرتك تقول لي فعلا ده لازم اعمله ولا لا؟ يعني انا كانتربرنور دلوقتي عندي ايديا بشتغل عليها هل المفروض اهندل ده ابدا اهندله على الويب 3 ولا دي رقم نمبر 1 يعني اكمل في التراك بتاعي ولا ابدا ان انا اخد تراك بتاع ويب 3 واشوف الموضوع ثاني حاجه ثاني حاجه يعني يعني اخد اخد تراك بتاع ويب 3 بالفكره بتاعتي يعني انت ايه الفكره؟ اوكي انا عندي فكره وشغال عليها اه اوكي اه النمبر تو انا دلوقتي شايف طبعا حضرتك بتتكلم على الديفلوبرز طب احنا محتاجين الديفلوبرز دولت يكونوا يعرفوا انه هاو للموضوع ده عشان نقدر نوصل لل صح. طب ده ايه خطواته المفروض كلنا نكون بنفكر دلوقتي عشان نوصل للمعلومه دي فيعني محتاجين بس ان التو نوتس دي تقول لي يعني نقعد مع بعض اكتر ونتكلم اي ثينك هافين مور ايفنتس كده وجست اكشينجينج ايدياز ونتعلم التولز Um, that's the only way forward. هل بقى لو لو فكرتك دي تبتديها في ويب 3 ولا لا؟ يعني it depends on what you want to do وانت عايز تعمل ايه uh, وعايز تعملها فين؟ يعني مين السوق بتاعك فين؟ في مصر؟ طبعا ويب 3 might be tough بس المفيد في ويب 3 ان الناس حوالين العالم كلها بتشتغل على ويب 3 ف the globe is your market. فلو عايز تبني solution that في that is solving a problem to the web 3 community then خلاص الناس مش الماركت بتاعك فا يس ليتس بيلد مور برودكتس اند سوليوشنز ذات ار مور جلوبالي فوكست يعني ذات ار سولفينج فور ويب 3 على حسب الفكره ايه لو هي بتسولف بروبلم للكوميونتي في ويب 3 ذن طبعا ليتس بيلد ات فور ويب 3 اند ليتس بيلد كوميونتيز في مصر اللي ذات ار بيلدينج برودكتس ذات ار مور جلوبالي مايندد يعني ومش هيبقى في نقص في حته الديفلوبرز دول لان هو ذا سيم ديفلوبرز ذات ار ديفلوبينج ويب 2 ابلكيشنز وود ليرن ايزلي اباوت ويب 3 عشان اتس ديسنتراليزد لايك كل الناس ار بوتينج ابس اون ذي نوت سنتراليزد بس اون اب ستورز اتعلمنا ازاي وي ليرن ذا لانجويج وي دو ات يو كان ليرن ذا ويب 3 ديسنتراليزد لانجويجز اند ستارت ديفلوبينج رايت اواي فهي الفكره از اف ات فيتس وات يو ار دوينج ات ويل كليك But بالزبط. don't definitely push it there. Yeah. ولو ما فيش ناس هنا في مصر that are still have the skills. اللي حلو في Web3 إنه once you get into the community, there are people all around the world اللي يعني ممكن يساعدوك. ف you can find a Web3 developer في في اليونان في أمريكا that will come in and everyone is working remotely in a very decentralized fashion. ف we need to collaborate مع ال talent اللي برا مصر especially in the space if we want to build better solutions. Yeah. تمام. Yeah. في طب هو اصل احنا بي... يعني تعالوا نبدا كده زجزاج ونروح كده او بصي جنبك اهو هناك ناخد كده ونيجي كده ماشي انا بحاول افكر اعمل الجوريزم ازاي صعبه قوي فيري بريميتيف كويستشن هاو دو وي ستارت انترينج ويب 3 وير از ذا انتري بوينت يعني اي اندرستود ايفري ثينج ايلس هاو كان اي ستارت باي وذ وات بيربس هاو كان اي ستادي وذ ذا بيربس اوف وات تو هاف ان ايدنتيتي اند اون ثينجز اون ذا ويب يو جاست كرييت ا واليت اون ميتا ماسك داونلود ان ابلكيشن كولد ميتا ماسك Okay. And you create a wallet as easy as be. It actually gives you this address. You click the address. Back. You're now on Web3. Okay. Then I'm an identity. Then you have an identity. You can choose back to use it to log in with identity. This for DeFi is like the Wasimi Alum or for other applications. Or to go on something like OpenSea, like Amazon and Jumia and all the things together. The biggest marketplace for Web3 things. Where you okay. can basically to already allow the NFTs to take right away without even signing up. So once you have this wallet address, you'd log into these apps. Okay. Buy, buy an NFT, buy some Ethereum. The only way to get in is to have some skin in the game. So buy some Ethereum, create a wallet. Zayma Basuni Biul, play a blockchain game. Uh, go on OpenSea, buy an NFT, participate in a DAO, and see some similar DAOs that are that grab your attention. And see how you can contribute, read proposals, and see what they're doing, and contribute. That's this is the real way of going about it, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna finish the side. Da, خلاص. We're gonna go to the side. Da, بعدها. Okay. Thank you for the presentation. I have a question as a as a data scientist. You were talking about there are jobs in the field that are usually available. So how would data? How do we use data in the topic? Or how does data science specifically? I think you you know the answer. But you're doing data science, huh? Yes, I am the one. But I think you're the best one to answer that question. But so from my point, yeah, what I understand completely, yeah, what I think is in with these decentralized technologies, 
the access to data is not going to be as scarce as it was for waqtina dilwaqti. In Ninta, as a data scientist, in order for you to work on a proper data set, you needed to be part of Amazon's team. علشان تبص على الداتا سات الخطيره دي وتطلع انجنز بتعمل حاجات حقيقيه. Now these data sets are public and they're decentralized and they're being built on the blockchain as we speak and you can look at any of the networks زي Ethereum يعني people are using the data of Ethereum network to generate products using its data زي Nansen for example check it out. اسمه نانسن ان اي ان اس اي ان دي يوز ديسنتراليزد داتا من كل النتوركس وبيدوا للناس فاينانشال اناليسيز بس الداتا سيتس موجوده بابليكلي فاي ثينك اتس جونا بي ايزير بس ديفينتلي ذا واي اي ريلي دونت نو ات يعني ليتس ليتس توك كان وي جو باك اه فروم باك تو هنا يعني يس بلو شيرت اند ذن بلو شيرت شكرا شكرا على الهول ديب هول اللي احنا دخلنا فيها ده بريبير ريجولاتوري ايه ده؟ بريبير ريجولاتوري انت قلت تو بي بريبير ريجولاتوري ازاي؟ هنخش ويب هنخش ويب 3 ازاي؟ والريجولاتوري بطيئه احنا مش بنتكلم على تشينج احنا بنتكلم على فكره بقى ريجولاتوري وادوبشن ذي ار جونا بيت ايتش اذر سونر اور ليتر وي ديدنت نو Two years ago or a year ago, that all the other Arab countries are going to ride on that and start with Dubai and with Saudi Arabia. It was news for us. If Dubai is going to come sooner or later, our country sooner or later is going to regulate it. Like adoption is hard. What we can do is do our own research. What I'm going to say is that DYOR. Make sure that what you're doing now doesn't basically break any rules. What you you're doing now doesn't. make anything illegal. So you need to understand the situation and build up for it. But uh, you still, we still are waiting for this, these technologies to be regulated. Like, no, they're not yet. For sure, yeah. But you don't need to only serve Egypt. Well, all of these Web3 applications are serving everyone equally. يعني انت بتعمل اكسشينج علشان ليتس سي هتعمل اكسشينج فور ميدل ايسترن كوينز الناس اللي هتعمل توكنز ما هو كل الناس هتستخدمه في الميدل ايست نوت اونلي ايجيبت اند اتس ا ديسنتراليزد ابلكيشن اتس نوت ان ابلكيشن سنتراليزد فور ايجيبت فيو كان اكشلي بيلد فور بيجر ماركتس اند وايدر ماركتس انتل وير ايبل تو بيلد فور اور ماركت ليرن تو ايرن بلاي تو ايرن تو ايرن تو ايرن تو ايرن حاجات كتير جدا محتاجه قبل ما نتفق عليها هي المحتاجين عليها الريجولاتوري yeah. نستنى نستنى ولا نبدا انت th- احنا بنتكلم بخبرك I think نبدا ذا رايت واي يعني وي شود اولويز ستارت ذا رايت واي يعني تخيل برضو ان اللي احنا بنتكلم فيه ده الكهرباء قبل ما الكهرباء تطلع فالناس كتيره كانت بتقول الكهرباء دي حاجه مضره ومش حلوه ومش عارف ايه It's gonna actually happen sooner or later. We need to play an active role in it. Learn about it, see what we can contribute and actually apply it. There is no regulation to be on it. Bizarre. عشان اخش لازم اقلع السوب بتاع الريجوليشن. بس يس يات يا بس 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 ان سيم تايم يو هاف عندك الاس اي سي في امريكا ار ريجوليتنج كريبتو عشان they're trying to understand to a certain extent مش عارف هو صعب اقول لكم على حاجه عشان الكونفرسيشن ما توسعش بالذات في الحته دي what we know what we know for sure is in at the end of the day there are some things that are going to be regulated uh, excuse me i am i think i am the only man here from the legal field yeah and uh, the problem i'm writing uh, about blockchain from the legal perspective And I'm writing about uh, uh, digital contracts from the legal perspective in Egypt. I'm a judge. And this thing is, is very new to the legal field. We are not the same as uh, engineers and architecture in uh, technology. I was lucky to study in Frankfurt and in uh, Torino and Italy. So I got a new uh, teaching in these fields. But here in Egypt, the legal field is far away from you, what you are all doing. They are very late, and I'm trying to push them. 
For example, I'm a judge and I was pushing the e courts for 10 years. Yes. Until it happened in the economic courts mm -hmm. in Egypt. Now we have a full project. It's called e court. It's totally automatic. Courts, e courts, electronic yeah. courts, okay? Yeah. So for, uh, it's very interesting to hear about Web3 here in Egypt. I'm, I'm really happy. And I think regulate this thing is, is very difficult for many reasons. First, now, if you, if you ask about if lawyers, judges, and all people in the legal field are aware about all these new trends, they are not aware. Actually, مش بس هنا في مصر هو اللي بيقولوا ان اشي ده يعني لسه كان حد بيقول البارلمنت والتريجري بتاعت امريكا ما يعرفوش لسه عنهم. I'm following the United States and Europe, they are doing good. The legal field in Europe and United States, they are good because they are doing side by side. And I see the legal tech in Europe is great. The legal tech in the United States is great. But here it's difficult. For example, I'm trying to push the legal tech to law schools. To put it in the curriculum of the law schools. It's very hard. But I'm trying to do that. So I'm doing that alone, which is a very hard work. That one man show is trying to push here and here and here, law school, judiciary, okay? So I think that you need a legal supporters for you. So I ask you to make connection with lawyers, judges, law professors who are who are willing to support you in your ideas, in developing. Uh, the, uh, whatever it is, uh, websites or uh, uh, the new trend like Web3, okay. I think you need support, legal support. But in the Ministry of Justice, for example, we have one or two uh, people who are specializing in, uh, in, in, in uh, what I could say, the technical laws or all these issues. So th this question is very good. I think it will take time, but the another answer is great. This uh, decentralization, which is the future, it's about not to involve the government. It's like, uh, I would say, a boom of freedom. A boom of freedom. So it's, it's something mixed. Yes. But I really uh, like the Web3. This is my uh, feel. But for the government, for the regulation, I don't it's, know it's, how it will work. It's bad news, but uh, let's talk about it. Okay, thank you very much. Can we have uh, a question from here? And then, yeah. Omar? Oh, no, Omar. Yeah. Here. First of all, thank you for coming and talking to us. I think it was a great presentation, great introduction. Can you, Asimi, can you go back to the slide with the positives of NFTs? Uh, the positives? You, yeah, you were talking about utility, design, the yeah, things. Uh, the categories of NFTs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I just, I, I missed it. <laughs> And uh, I wanted to ask you guys both, uh, as with everything human beings are involved in, there's always abuse and there's always bad actors. Yes. So I, oh, we talked a lot about the benefits and the positives, but yes. as with anything to do with financial systems, we find bad actors, we find money laundering, terrorism, drugs, a lot of uh, potential for abuse. So I was hoping you guys would talk to us about... Um, Security, the risks, uh, security and encryption, things like 51% attacks and double spend problems and how crypto, uh, or sorry, the blockchain can help um, get past this. Like, I think, I think it's an amazing piece of technology. Uh, when you come to apply it to, for example, uh, in emerging markets in Africa, uh, the World Food Program is using it to process payments for refugees without anything. You don't need a card, you don't need an ID. You just need uh, a number. And then you can get your meal ticket. At the same time, you see bad actors abusing it, and like anon um, the fact that you stay anonymous and it's in the ledger gets uh, helps people get away with a lot. So I was wondering if you could talk to a little bit about like um, encryption security and how you see if it's uh, like if, if it's possible that Great. the way yeah. future like if it's. Now, I'll tell you just on the thing that you said. You said you said double spending. Okay, that's exactly why the I mean, the white paper of. Bitcoin was all about and we want to create a chain that is secure and encrypted 
ما يبقاش فيها دبل سبيندنج فهو ذا تكنولوجي باي ات سيلف از سوبر سكيور يس ذا يوسج اوف ات يو كان نوت كنترول كاز اتس ديسنترلايزد اند اني وان زي ما وي كان ترانسفورم تو ترانسفير تو لاجئين فلوس رايت اواي يو كان ترانسفير تو اني وان هوز دوينج سمثينج ايليجال رايت اواي فاليوسج والجوفرننس حاجه والتكنولوجي نفسها حاجه ثانيه التكنولوجي واز بيلت تو بيسكلي ميك شور نو دبل سبيندنج هابنز اون ذا تشين عمرها ما حصلت ويل نيفر هابن بيتكون هازن بن هاكت ان ذا لاست 10 ييرز يعني مش هيبقى في فيلم ان انا دفعت الوسيمي وليك في نفس الوقت 10 بيتكوين ووصلوا لكم ده بيحصل في اللي احنا عايشينه ويل نيفر هابن اون ذا بلوك تشين كاز ات واز بيلت اكزاكتلي تو بريفنت دبل بيمنتس مثلا سو ذا ريسك اوف ابيوس كومز مور فروم ذا اكشوال بيبل لوزينج ذير انفورميشن فروم هاو وي جوفرن ذا نتورك لان على فكره وي هاد كايند اوف ويب 3 اكسبيرينسز لايك كريدت ريدت ده كان كل الناس بتكتب اللي هي عايزه ان يو كان اب فوت اور داون فوت بيبل بس كونتنت بيطلع فوق او الكونتنت اللي الناس اللي عايزه تتكلم عليه فوق والكونتنت الوحش تحت بس كان في كونتنت برضو وحش وكان ديسنترلايزد والناس بتقول اللي هي عايزاه دي سبيك اباوت ايليجال ستاف بس ذي ار نوت اب فوتد سو ستيل ذا سيم سو اول ابوت وات وي دو اباوت ماي سكند كويستشن تو بوث اوف يو يعني از لايك يو ار سينج ريجيليتوري سيستمز ان ذا ستيتس Uh, they're fighting it. A lot of people, a lot of the big funds, they're pulling away from it because they see it's too risky. And uh, the cultural attitudes to change. I lived in Africa for a long time, and you see people, they don't go buy online, for example. They want to go to the store, hold it with their hand, and then buy. So like, what, how do you see the way forward when it comes to overcoming these cultural factors when it comes to uh, Web3 in the region and um, regulatory mechanisms embracing it? If, if we said... Decentralization is the opposite of regulation. Shoftil peer to peer Africa. Are they going to run parallel? Yeah. Shoftil peer to peer beta Africa. The same people who never bought anything online during COVID, it was super hard to transfer international money to their countries. ما كانش حد هيروح البنك ويحط فلوس في انجلترا عشان يبعت لبنت خالته في اثيوبيا. So Ethiopian used the blockchain to make value right away. يحولوا عمرهم ما كانوا بيشتروا اونلاين، عمرهم ما كانوا بيخشوا على امازون، بس كان في نيد ان انا عايز فلوس من اهلي اللي في بلد ثانيه وكل البنوك قافله لمده اسبوع. What can I do now? The use او the need او the problem if it's there the يعني the use case is gonna always win. So I think احنا we're able to see a lot of use cases in the next uh, short future that is gonna get the adoption there. Not only like NFTs but with many things. Exactly. Yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. But I think that mainly to increase adoption, uh, regulation ends up happening as a result, as a reaction. They're not the ones innovating and initiating, hey, we need to regulate this to encourage this new technology. Usually technology comes, people adopt, and then the regulation reacts. Uh, I think the only way to, to move forward is to make sure that we build in the space, that we get to have some skin in the game. And I know a lot of people that are buying Ethereum, buying Bitcoin, and they're finding loop, loopholes in the system in Egypt. Uh, people are finding loopholes. Um, the more people that adopt this, that's when everyone is going to listen. Hey, there, there's new ways that the people are interacting, building organizations, creating value, and it's uh, out of our system. And before you know it, I think this system that people are going to be interacting with are good, is going to exceed the current system of the regulation. Uh, one, la one last fun. question and I'm done. One last question. Uh, I, from what I understood about Bitcoin mining is every uh, period of time, it resets and you have a finite amount that you can there's, mine. There's, yeah, there's a, there's a limited amount of Bitcoins. Okay, and so, yeah. so my question to you guys, since you're experts in the field, is, <laughs> is it still feasible to get rigs and try to mine when the next thing resets or do you find it is too high of a barrier to entry when it comes to having a lot of rigs and spending a lot on hardware and having a, a, a yeah, well heated cost, yeah, yeah a well ventilated farm exactly. well egypt has one of the cheapest costs of electricity never, in the yeah, world we i really don't know a lot about mining because what i know it's illegal here so we would never do yeah you never anyone would never want to do something illegal and yeah, yeah. willingly yeah. yet It's not only illegal here. It's saying in the head of that mining, they want deep computers with wasallah, I'm sure. It's actually creating problems or good things even in other countries. But here in Egypt, mining is not even something we can think of. Yeah. Uh, I think it's very far fetched from what we can do, given that we already don't, yani, have this regulated. I don't think is, we can is, ever give you advice for that. It is getting much harder. Any globally, it's getting much more. 
uh, harder and more expensive yeah. to to mine if you, you want to. to yeah. You have to spend a lot and get a lot of rigs to actually yes. just extract. Yeah. 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 In order to mine, you use a lot of electricity. So electricity leaves a lot of carbon. So now in order for you to mine legally in some countries, you need to be using clean energy. I mean, it's just computers are very heavy. On the other hand, mining is the encryption of the data that we need to get out of the chain. It's not just that computers are very heavy to encrypt the data and get out of the chain. It's just that computers and sources of electricity that are clean. So it's a solar on the mine. So it's very expensive, not legal in Egypt. Nothing near us, yeah. Okay. Another thing about the metaverse or Web3 is that it's very clear on ست سبع شركات هم اللي هيبقوا دومينيتنج بقى فور اكزامبل ما اعرفش اوبن سي هو اللي هيبقى في الان اف تيز جيت تريدد والباقي كله هيتلم ايثيريوم از جونا بي ذا كريبتو كرنسي اوف تشويس ذات ايفري بادي از جونا ادوبت والباقي كله هيتحرق ميتافيرس هيبقى هو الاراضي اللي ناس هتروح تشتري فيها ف... ده اكننا كده والكهرباء بتطلع قلنا ان التلفزيون ده هو جهاز القرن فاهم يعني اللي هو التلفزيون بس اللي هيكسب واي حاجه ثانيه بتستخدم الكهرباء مش هتكسب فهو از ذا ايديا از ناثينج اوف ذس كان ميك سنس بيكوز ذس از ا تكنولوجي ان اتس ايرليست دايز اند وي دونت ايفن نو ذا ليميتس اوف اتس ابلكيشنز يعني الابلكيشنز بتاعتها قاعده بتزيد شهر بشهر من ست شهور ما كانش فيه جيمنج بعد كده بقى فيه ايه فاي دونت ثينك ذات ذا وينر تيكس ات اول كايند اوف انالوجي وركس وذ ذس Given that it's not easy yeah. to predict the future, Ahmed. Oh, but there's a follow-up question to that. I'm not saying that the most of the VC money that's going into this space came from, حتت ما يعني جاي من حتت مركزة. Yes. For the biggest VC players, specifically Andreessen Horowitz, حاطين تقريبا ما يعني most of the VC money came from. They're taking risks in the electricity. قبل ما تظهر. They are taking risks, but if مصلحتهم إن هم يأمنوا ال ال long term upside بتاعهم. Yes. Yes. فا فا أنا my argument is is a bit existential. يعني عامة أنا حاسس إن decentralization يعني مش يعني is a very subjective term. يعني. Yes. فا someone somewhere needs to needs to have access to to the data and someone needs to reap the benefits. يعني. It's uh, it's a very difficult uh, argument to uh, yeah. to counteract. I mean, this is where most of the money is, yeah. and the biggest players, هم اللي حاطين الفلوس معظم الفلوس. Yes. What does decentralization mean? Yeah. But it doesn't mean that they're fully in control. Yes. Okay. But the good thing in هم they they're playing with the new kind of game, which is yes, we are major investors. And we're going to back it, but at the same time, when when this company that they invested in has a tokenization model, mm. other people are contributing to the system, and everyone has kind of an equal say. Um, it's not like a Web two company where the investors will come in, and it's only them on the board, and mm. they can get to the direct and guide how things are going to go. I think naturally, because things are more decentralized, yes, there are more decentralized companies that are centralized more than others, and there's different uh, kind of degrees to decentralization. But inherently, I think more and more companies are going to and communities are going to be decentralized. I doubt it's going to be a winner takes all like like uh, the previous Web two. But طبعا we have the risks of a Facebook and Meta that come in and say, hey, we have the metaverse and they are going to be the most centralized player. Mm. I don't think they're going to win like they did in Web two. There are going to be other uh, decentralized platforms that will. Exceed the power of centralized networks because this is what's happening. Any yani Bitcoin and Ethereum, in the amount of ten years, are bigger than other uh, GDPs of many nations put together. Yes. So this is the power of decentralization when it's truly decentralized in a way. وحاجة كمان إن حتة بس دي centralization دي علشان دائما بتسمع إن it's a bit tricky hard. So I think the use cases behind it. It's simple can change the way we do things. يعني لو كلنا فكرنا إن for example. رخصة العربية can be put on a blockchain where everyone can know I'm driving all over the world. فمش we don't need international driving license. There's a chain for driving licenses for people on the globe. You cut a lot of costs in the middle. Medical records. يعني كمان إحنا as a government country whatever the technology can be used in ways that can change our lives. فمتخيل أنت مش محتاج تثبت لأي حد في العالم إنك مثلا متجوز علشان شهادة جوازك بلغة بلدك. لا هي خلاص once you're married officially in a country you can own an NFT on a blockchain where everyone on the world in the world any hotel would know that this is you. This is. لا 
everyone still knows the identity and you can still have a use case embedded for حاجات كتيرة. So I think in decentralization is, is certainly not as evil as we feel it is once we hear about it. Because we're used to centralization. If we use both together, and that's what I believe is going to happen, I believe that the centralized organizations are going to be there. But some of their operations are going to be more decentralized. واحدة واحدة. يعني Facebook مش عارف ممكن يبقوا موجودين بس one digital currency you can pay across all. So the mix is going to give us as users more value for sure. دلا تخيلي. حسن. Thank you for a great talk. And I think there is a sweet spot when it comes to centralization and decentralization. And as Web3 adapts to the world we live in, we will see that mix and hopefully things will go for the best. So my question has to do with data security itself. And I think data protection has always been a problem, whether it's Web2 or Web3. We see regulatory uh, bodies working on Web2 on how they can protect data for individuals. But can you just elaborate on how secure data actually is on Web3 and how the world can actually move forward with a more secure portal for data? Definitely. I mean, uh, simply, there isn't one server that holds all your data, right? You're not depending on a particular organization. When it decentralized applications and protocols allow your data to be stored in computers all around the world. Now, that's ultimately what it is. So... You know, it, there isn't one single source of failure. Uh, the data is all around and no, it can be tampered with, right? Well, Using no, the blockchain it was technology. built for that, yeah, Hassan. It was built for that. You cannot basically change anything on the blockchain except if you own 51% of the nodes, which realistically can never happen. In every, yeah, the idea of mining on a blockchain is making sure that everyone has the same version and it's not breakable it's immutable يعني هو the technology was built to secure the data on it and the transactions on it ما حدش يقدر يغيره ف maybe it just needs more reading can we actually let's get the last question if we have so we can have a more casual talk ونعرف نتكلم مع بعض لو حد عنده اي اسئله and we can close any last questions great احمد احمد has one last question so we can close with it الهايبوثيتيكال سيناريو از وات لو حصل ا فيري هاي بروليفريشن اوف ستيبل كوينز هيحصل ايه احمد از اور مانجنج دايركتور ان اوبنر اوكي سو وي بيسيكلي ورك اندر احمد ليدرشيب اند هيز تيستينج اور لا بهرك ما اعرفش بس اي ثينك اتس ا فيري هارد كويستشن بيسيكلي تو انسر ابي يسمع في السؤال بتاع الداتا بروتكشن او الداتا برايفسي وبيسمع في السؤال وبيسمع في السؤال بتاع السنتراليزيشن ف There is a very good, there is very high potential for stable coins to uh, be the norm. Yeah, uh, it, I think to a certain extent, I think it will be the norm. But they came, and they came on the on the a decentralized cryptocurrency. So I think it's going to make it easy for the mainstream to adopt crypto and for governments to kind of play in this world. But uh, they're not going to go anywhere. I think the use cases for stable coins is growing. But uh, I think the underlying, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum. Or someone else, another decentralized uh, uh, crypto will will still be winning and dominant. I think thank we, can, uh, we can definitely close with that. Yes. Okay, we're past time. Thank you all. Well, thank you guys so much.